So I, I would urge people uh, to consider the safety needs of our citizens as well as uh, the benefits that, as you already have, that the library provides to our citizens and the benefits that our recreation department provides to our citizens uh, when you consider your vote on these different items. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Callaghy. Gentlemen at the microphone, please state your name and address, sir. Carl Johnson, 9 Washington Street. I'd like to know what it cost to shut those lights off. How much what? did it cost to shut each light off? What does it t cost to shut, it sh shut off a street light? <laughs> Mr. Hanlon is the, super in is the Director of Public Works. Hi, good evening. Um, uh, 381 lights were shut off at $12.82 a light, plus uh, $1,389.52 for police details, for a total of $6,274. Now, is that going to cost us, if we turn them back on, is it going to cost us 6000 and whatever it was? To no, turn it's them not going to cost 6000 but it's going to cost $5,605. The... Uh, I think it's a waste to pass it. The, uh, just, just so I finish the figures for you, uh, the budget originally was $125,000. Uh, it was amended down with an anticipated cost savings of 38000 and change. Uh, ac ac after the uh, expenses for turning off the lights, uh, the annual savings is projected out at $32,060. So uh, we're into our first quarter, so that's about 8000 in savings. So if you did turn the lights back on, net out the costs, you save today 2400 bucks. Thank you. Mr. Piero, please state your name and address. Piero, again. 17 Rogers, sir. We, we play in the game here. Either we put the light on or turn them off. Let's should not be a big, <laughs> let's not be a big unit here. Either keep them on or shut them off. A big unit, that's what it is. Chair sees two people waiting to be recognized. We'll take Mr. Smith first and then the lady at the other microphone. William Smith, 230 Elm Street. I, I believe there's a couple of reasons why we are even here tonight. And I think if you go back to the April town meeting and look at the budgeting process that was had taken place prior to April, it wasn't so much that the town of North Reading didn't vote the override. It was the fact that the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee Re reduce the operational budget that we're talking about tonight by $736,000. That, that, that money um, that has come back from the state, yes, it, it's true that there is substantial amounts of money that came back to, to replace and regenerate that, that $736,000. But there's absolutely no reason why we can't put the, uh, the lights back on and actually fulfill every one of these articles that are presented to us tonight. The, the money is available. The reason they don't want to put the money back in, some of the reasons that the uh, Finance Committee is voting against, my question of the Board of Selectmen, if you took the 736 out of the operational budget that is involved with all these fundings of these articles, do you intend to take the same 736 out of that budget next year? Because if, in fact, you do, you're already at a deficit. The, my, my other question is, the, uh, the Board of Selectmen and the uh, Finance Committee in uh, 2002 created a new position in this town to the tune of 50, roughly $50,000, and that's gone on for two years, which has represented $100,000 just, just in expenses. Mrs. The point of order has been raised. The, uh, just a moment, Mrs. Smith. There's a question before us, line 45, PPW. The question before us is, are we going to fund $25,000 for lights? My position is, if in fact we've expended $100,000 in, in other monies, instead of on the lights, and in other words, you know, it's, it's really Just antagonistic, moment, and that's Smith. why people don't come to these meetings. Just every a moment. time I speak, I'm ruled out of order. Mr. Smith, just a moment. The point of order has been raised. The chair has been asked to rule on the point of order. And we are talking here on this motion and on all the other motions under Article 5 about changing priorities, and you are just 
illustrating the priorities and therefore your comments are germane to the question before us and you may continue. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My point is, if in fact we hadn't created new positions two years ago, we'd have another $100,000 tonight to work with. The position that was created took jobs and took uh, different uh, positions that were already in the town hall that were being done by other people and we created a new job for, for another person. If we hadn't created that job, we'd have an extra $50,000 last year and we'd have an extra $50,000 this year and these lights would never have been turned off in the first place. Lady at the other microphone and then we'll hear from Mr. Murphy. Yes, Julie Brown on Southwick Road. And my opinion is, is it true that these lights, if certain people want lights put on that have been turned off, they could do it? Mr. Murphy? Reading Municipal Light Department has an Adopt-A-Light program. Mm -hmm. So if your light is off and you would like it on, should this fail, you can adopt your street light. That's what I was under the assumption from the transcript. And with that said, I am a walker here in North Reading. And I grew up in an age where we probably didn't have as many street lights as we do. I find no problem being a night walker in having the reduced lighting that we have. I don't think it, from the police department, I'd like to hear if there's been an increase in thievery or an increase in vandalism over what it had been with the street lights off. I still find we have adequate street lights, and as far as I know, we all have street li car lights that will aid us in the darkness and flashlights. So I just don't see that it's a real issue to cause the town that type of expense when we will be shutting them off. It seems a waste of money. Thank you. Mr. Murphy, do you still wish to be heard? <laughs> to the prior speaker, the $736,000 transfer that occurred at April Town Meeting was voted by the body. The override was a separate issue. While some people want to tie those two things together, I personally do not. Um, I think they're separate issues, and the budget was voted by the body, and the townspeople then voted on the override, and we have the budget that we have, and we have the priorities as we're set. We have some additional funding that's been identified, and we put those items before you to make a decision this evening. In terms of the position or positions, there are changes from year to year in positions. There are changes in year to year on the board. Things will change. I have no idea to the question, are we going to transfer another 736? I have no idea what, well, I do have an idea of what this year's budget process will be like, and I'm not looking forward to it. But I don't know exactly what the board will do. I don't know what the school committee's going to do. I don't know what the finance committee's going to do. I can only tell you that I hope this next budget process is like the last budget process and that we all work together to get it done as best we can with all of the information and funding that we have available and then we continue to move forward as a community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Woodmansey, please state your name and address, sir. Gerald Woodmansey, 34 Elm Street, North Reading. I live down by the Thompson Country Club, right opposite Haywood Avenue, the uh, east end and they've shut off the light in front there. This is a very dangerous situation. Way back, even during the daytime, I had a son that was hit out front. Now, they have the light shut off there. It's just where Haywood Avenue comes out, and just before you get to the Thompson Club and the Greens, and there is a light there, but it's a dark area. It's a very unsafe area anyway. I've had the police come down and put the machine down there, so they try to slow people down. Uh, there's been numerous accidents over there over the years in that area. Uh, I believe the police were doing, did a study on what lights should have been turned on or turned off. I believe there are maybe some, some lights in the town that people don't want to have turned on, but I think that way back when people fought and paid and everything struggled to get these lights turned on to make it a safer community, which everyone knows that if you have lights on, it's a safer community all the way around. I believe that a lot of, maybe they didn't put, shut off some of the ones in the right locations or whatever. And I believe that in most cases that the lights should be turned on. It'll make it a lot safer in the town. And if you're talking about safety, this is one of the most important things in the town is safety. Not just for the people in town, but for the people traveling through and everything else. And on Route 62, we have a lot of 
transients a lot of a lot of traffic on that now can't even get out of my driveway or go across the street because of the traffic so i guess one of the questions would be i understand that the police made a survey on this and i was wondering if the chief has any comments on this on what lights would be turned back on or which ones they recommend turn back on or off mr murphy do you wish to answer mr woodman's comments just to not directly answer the comment but I should inform the body that prior to the decision to put this on the warrant, a process was begun to identify those lights that were turned off and to identify other lights that could, there were people who called and said, will you come get mine, turn it off, I hate the thing. Um, so there were other people who called, Mr. Woodmancy and I spoke with concerns about safety. There was a review process in place. That review process was not completed. If the body votes tonight to put the street lights back on, then that's, that process doesn't need to go forward. If they vote not to fund this particular line item, then that process will continue, and I would presume it will continue in an expedited manner because it was pretty close to the end. So. Uh, there was a process in place. We kind of held it up, thinking that they may get, they may all get turned on, and we didn't want to bring bring them out and have them turn on some and so forth and so on. So we are addressing those issues. I heard about them. The rest of the board heard about them, and we are, we will we will address those issues if this article fails tonight. Thank you. Chief Pernell, would you, would you like to answer Mr. Whitman's question? Uh, yes, there was a couple of questions whether the, the increase in uh, crime or anything like that. No, there hasn't been an increase since the lights went out. Uh, we're still working on uh, what intersections should be lit and what not. Uh, and somebody asked for my recommendation. Well, you know, as chief of police, I'm bound to be in favor of lights being on uh, for the safety factor of it. Uh, also, you got to keep in mind we got Halloween coming up, but young kids are uh, roaming the streets, so and that's a fact that you should keep in mind. I just want to urge you, please, to vote to have the lights turned back on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first, we'll take the lady in the aisle. Please state your name and address, ma'am. Anna Kleinfeld, 82 Haverhill Street. And I was glad to hear there was a review committee in regards to the light situation, because I, I guess I really wasn't aware of that. and. Um, and it's kind of, you know, like if you can adopt a light to be turned off, can you, uh, to, to be turned on, can you adopt one to be turned off? Or is, does it have to go in front of the review committee? <laughs> Mr. Murphy, would you answer Ms. Kleinfeld's question? It's not really adoption, as someone said up here, it's <laughs> divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Norton, please state your name and address, sir. John Norton, 279 Main Street. I am the appointed uh, Citizens Advisory Board member to the RMLD. I would ask that this article be passed, this line item be passed, as has previously been stated. It's a matter of public safety. It's also, um, it's a matter of an environmental uh, situation where we have certain areas of town that are, are extremely dark. Again, as has been presented here, if you do not opt to vote for this, um, there will be probably a resurvey of some of the areas that the street lights are off now. However, just to carry one additional step forward on Mr. Murphy's comment on the adopt a street light program, because I have had people ask me, you can call the Reading Municipal Light Department, you give your street address you specify the light that you would like to have turned back on and what they do, they will come back out, turn the light on at no charge to the customer requesting and that will appear as a separate line item on your bill per month. It's usually in the neighborhood of seven to eight dollars depending on whether you have a mercury vapor or a sodium vapor lamp. The other thing that if this is turned back on in conjunction with what Mr. Hanlon said, there is a small percentage of the lights that were turned off under the first survey that were the old style incandescent lamps. Those will be turned back on at no charge. 
because the admin fixture will be completely replaced thank